All right, a message about acrylic. Acrylic is permanent. It will not come out of your clothes once it's dry. It'll often stain if you try and wash it out when it's wet. So wear a smock or an apron. It can be thinned with water while it's wet, but once it dries, it dries like plastic. So you must clean with soap and water before it dries or the brushes die. So when you clean up, wash your brushes with soap and water and massage. Store with the hair up. Wash your palette. If you plan to use it tomorrow, cover it with like plastic or a tin foil. Paper towel does not keep air out. And then put it in your cubby. Sponge your work area. So if you do not clean your brush, it's ruined and I'm not lying about that. This has acrylic paint on it and it's dried. I cannot spread the bristles apart unless I tear this paint. If I put it in a cup of water and try to rinse it and clean it, it will not come off. It is permanently dried now. This brush is a piece of trash. It's basically the same as a drumstick now because someone did not clean their acrylic paint off of it. So please wash all brushes with soap and water. Store with the hair up. Okay? If you are not going to do that, do not use the brushes. If you are in a rush, I am going to leave this bucket in the sink. At least put your brush in the water. This one's double sided. Please put the brush in the water just so it doesn't dry because once it dries, it looks like this and it's useless. It's a piece of garbage. So please do not make our lovely brushes pieces of garbage. All right, this is how you get paint. Um, here we have in this drawer, clean paint trays, clean-ish anyway. And you'll grab a paint tray go over here. And then our acrylic paints are kept in this cabinet for us to use. This cabinet has the refill jugs that are really huge. Please don't pour from those because you end up usually pouring more than you need. Um, on this cabinet, there's some tips and tricks. So if you want to blend it, you must work fast. Um, adding a wash before you add your stuff, creating atmosphere. Um, dip your brush in water before painting to help it go on smooth to make little crisp lines. Dry brushes when you blot the brush before painting so the paint goes on more stiff. You can create little trees that way. Um, is your paint not covering well? Add white to help cover up your drawing. So it's the same drawing that's just plain yellow that's with a little bit of white added to it. And it says make your painting more unique by adding your own, creating your own colors. So paint, this is right out of the bottle. This is paint mixed slightly with other colors. So kind of creates a little bit, something a little bit different. So you can always reference those tips and tricks. These are what we're using to distribute our paint. They're basically the same thing that you'd find at Subway that has mayonnaise in it. Um, on the bottom is a little squeezy part, suction area, that you just squeeze the paint out. Um, please be responsible with this. If you can't, then you will be given just a watercolor pan. So if you want to use the grown-up paint, act like a grown-up. So here we go. We're going to squeeze a little dollop of blue, a little dollop of red, and a little dollop of yellow. And for this assignment, um, for this for the worksheet, you can use a little dollop of white. And a little dollop of black. Okay. So now here I have my palette and my worksheet, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Okay, we are going to learn how to use acrylics with this mixing colors sheet. So here I have my acrylic on my palette, and I'm only going to use my primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, plus black and white to make this sheet. So here's the instructions. They have the primary colors, secondary colors, what a tint is, what a shade is, and then kind of instructions here, but I'm going to walk you through it right now. So here we have a table. On the middle 
of the table is where you're gonna put just the plain color. So on this side is the primaries, and this side is the secondaries. So primary red hue, hue just means color, primary red hue is gonna go right here. So I'll just do my red, and I'm gonna paint this square red. And this is a good exercise in craft to try and get a nice, clean painting job in this box. So as I'm getting up to this other side, I wanna turn my brush and maybe approach it a different direction so I can get in those corners without making a huge slappy mess. Okay, so there's primary red, and then it says primary blue hue, so that's just the true color. Hue means color, so primary blue hue. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, switch over to blue, go in a different direction to get in those corners, and rinse my brush. And then it says primary yellow hue. So I'm going to put the plain yellow in there. Okay, now I'm going to mix my secondary colors. So I'm going to ignore this middle one right now. Secondary orange, secondary purple, and secondary green. So Secondary color orange is mixing two colors together, and you might remember that, but it's uh, mustard and ketchup, or yellow and red. And whenever you mix colors, you always want to start with the lighter color or less dominant color and then add the other one in. So between yellow and red, I would say yellow is lighter, so I'm gonna start with yellow. I'll just scoop some up into another tray. And then I'll rinse my brush. And I'm gonna grab just a little bit of red because the red is gonna overpower the yellow quite a bit. So see how much yellow compared to red? And let's mix that up and see what we get. And that's a nice orange. If you think it's too yellow, you can add more red. If you think it's too red, you can add more yellow. So here I'm gonna put the orange right there. Now I'll rinse my brush, I'm gonna make my purple. And yellow, or sorry, red and blue are pretty similar in terms of power. Generally, they think the, the red is lighter, so I'm gonna grab some red, rinse my brush, grab some blue. See again, a little bit of blue compared to a lot of red, and mix it up, and I've got a nice dark purple I might add a little bit more blue to that because it feels a little red still. Still a little bit red. Let's get some more blue here. Here we go. And we'll go ahead and paint that purple on. Now, it's really dark. Um, if I add a white to it, it's technically making it a tint, but if it's hard to see, Let's put a little bit of white in there. And there's a purple. And, and then my secondary color, green. So green is yellow and blue. So again, I'll start with my lighter color, scoop it in here, grab a little bit of blue and it makes a nice green. So I'll put green on there. And if you feel like it's a little too yellow, you can add a little bit more blue. There we go. So now I've got all my primaries and my secondaries, and now I'm gonna make some tints and shades. So tint is where you add white to your color, and shade is where you add black. So whenever you add white, uh, my recommendation would be to start with white, you start with the lightest color. So here I'll make some little areas with some white. Now I'm gonna need six areas here, so we'll use those areas to make our tints. So here it says primary red tint. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of red and add it to some white. 
and that will make my tint, which for red actually just makes pink because pink is a tint of red. So there I'll put my tint of red right there. And if I want to cheat, I could make my tint of purple because I already have red in here, so if I add a little bit of blue, that'll make purple, but it'll make a tint because there's white in there. So there's my tint of purple. I know it's a tint of purple because it's red and blue, which makes purple, and it has white in it. It's almost like an equation. Rinse my brush. Now let's do my blue tint. So I'll add a little bit of blue to some white, and that'll make a light. Now what's left is my shades. So again, shade is a color plus black. So I have my red and I'm gonna add a little bit of black too. So here's some black, grab some red, mix it together. If you have just a little bit, you can even mix it right on your paper. So that's black plus red and that would be my shade of red. Okay, so now we have this middle row. And for our middle row, it's called a neutral or brown. So how you mix brown is all of the primary colors together. So if you take some yellow and some red and some blue, and you mix them all together, you'll start to get some sort of, see now this is kind of purpley, but that's just because I need more yellow. I don't know if it's looking too green. You know, green is yellow and blue, so it needs red to be more brown color. All right. I keep overdoing it here. There we go, now we're getting a brown. So here I'll put my brown right here. Maybe a slightly reddish brown, but it'll do. And then my tint would be brown plus white. And then my shade would be brown plus black. And here I've completed the first page of the acrylic paint practice. Now with cleanup, I want to, if I'm not, if I'm all done with this, I want to clean it out. Don't just leave it on the table or on the, on the counter because these, when they dry up, are really annoying. It's like trying to like tear cement out of there. So please wash it out. Wash your brushes really, really well with soap and water. If you think you're going to be lazy about it, at least leave it in a bucket of water so you're not ruining these nice brushes. Okay, good luck.